Hey everyone, in this video we're going to look at how we recreate um, Steve Bragg's classic phase technique. Um, if you've never heard it before, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, Steve Reich is an uh, old experimental electronic musician who, uh, old, um, who um, kind of coined a few production techniques. He kind of uh, popularized them. Um, and one of them is this phase technique. The track that's most famous, the track that um, um, kind of relies heavily on this technique is called It's Gonna Rain. Um, if you don't know it, please go ahead and check it out. Steve Reich, It's Going to Rain, or It's Gonna Rain. Um, I'll try and be a good YouTube dude and put a link in the description. Um, but yeah, we're going to go ahead and try to recreate this um, technique. Um, Steve kind of uses um, some vocal, some uh, spoken words from a speech. Um, I'm going to use, you may have already seen it, a Katy Perry loop. Um, for anybody that knows me, um, you'll know that I um, I really like working with Katy Perry vocals. I kind of, I've had these files, these really bad MP3 acapellas of Katy Perry for maybe five years and I just can't get away from using them. I love them. Um, and this demo is going to be no exception. So uh, we're going to go ahead and try and recreate this technique now. Um, for this to work, I've already done this. I've gone ahead and I've chopped down a one bar loop. This is a perfect one bar loop. I've warped it and looped it. Um, and I'm going to, eventually I'm going to extend this loop so that it lasts for a very long time. But before I do, I'm going to duplicate the entire track by selecting it and hitting Command and D. I'm going to quickly rename it, so KT2. Um, and now we've got two identical clips, and if I play those back... Don't ever look back. Now we've got super loud Katy Perry, awesome, okay. Um, I'm going to make a change to this second clip. What I want to happen here, just to give you an overview of the technique, I'm going to extend these two clips for a long, long time, um, but I'm going to have one slightly uh, detuned, one in a slightly lower pitch than the other, and that means that, I need to have this unwarped actually, that means that one of them will start to slowly fade out of time, drift out of time with the, with the original loop, um, and that kind of, uh, that delay, that gap will get longer and longer until they're kind of rubbing against each other, and it creates these rhythms um, really quite kind of beautiful rhythms that you would struggle to um, you would really struggle to synthesize um, or sequence so here we go I've got two loops at the minute they're identical on two separate tracks I'm going to unwarp this second one okay and I'm going to come down to my detune option down here and I'm going to detune it by a very small amount and I want you to pay attention to what happens to the end of the clip here this has to be unwarped for it to work and I'm going to hit um, minus 10. And I, when I hit enter on my keyboard here, watch the end of the clip. Okay, so you see how it's slightly longer than the other one now. And if I drift over, essentially what we've done is we've time stretched the audio a tiny bit using a detune option. Remember that if a, a sample is unwarped, the pitch and the playback speed are linked. So now when I play this, you can almost, you can kind of hear the phasing already happening there um, as a result of this audio clip being slightly different to the one that's on top of it. Okay, here we go now. So, this top loop, I'm going to duplicate this a bunch of times. I could loop it, um, warp and then loop, and then just extend and keep dragging. That might take me a long time to get it to where I want, though. This has to go on for a long time for this technique to work. So, I'm going to uh, select the clip, the top clip, and keep hitting Command and D. And once I've done like 16 bars or so, okay, I've done 16 bars, now I'm going to zoom out and I'm going to select all of those clips and then hit Command and D again, and now I'm duplicating more clips. Uh, once I'm there, I'm going to do the same thing, and again, zoom out, select the whole thing. Whoops, come on, give me the full thing. Uh, Command and D. Uh, to select multiple clips here, guys, I'm holding shift while I uh, make my selection. Uh, and this really does need to go on for a long time. This should be fine. Wow, it doesn't even like the duplicate. There we go. Okay, so we've got like 17 minutes uh, of this one clip. Long time. Okay, we're going to do exactly the same thing with the bottom clip. But look, um, this clip is slightly longer than the one above it. And this is where the technique starts to work. I'm going to duplicate... 
duplicate, duplicate, duplicate. And notice how every time I'm duplicating, the clip is kind of moving slowly and slowly more out of time with the original. It's actually not that slow, uh, as you can see. It's not super slow. It's kind of drifting out pretty quickly. Um, so I'm just keeping on hitting Command and D here. Now I'm going to zoom out. I'm going to select them all. Zoom right back in. It's really important on this second track that when you're duplicating, you need to make sure you've got it exactly spot on the end of the clip. Any further over, and you're going to have gaps in your audio. So if you were like here, it's not going to work. It has to be exactly here. Come on. Give me it. There it is. Okay. Uh, okay, so I'm just going to keep duplicating now. This is the boring bit. <clears throat> oh, dude, it does not like this at all. Okay. Why did it not want to duplicate that for me? Just try this again. Right click and duplicate. Okay, that's worked. And then again, and again, and again, and again, and again. And I'm going to keep doing this until I'm looking for when the front of one of these second clips, on the second track, sorry, lines back up with um, the first beat of any bar. Okay. So we've gone past it. Okay, look, 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 look. It's around here somewhere. Maybe there. See how this is much closer? So it's gone so far out of time that it's come back on itself right now. It's a couple further down. Maybe this middle one. And maybe we don't even have one where it's absolutely spot on because of the detune I've got. But you can see that here, um, the clips are almost lined up again. I'm going to count that as my end point uh, and delete everything after it to get rid. There's probably a point before that where they kind of lock back up as well. It's probably not taking 11 minutes, but who knows? We could go and check, but I'm not going to bother. Right, okay, so we've done the legwork. You might be wondering why are we doing this. Um, okay, I'm going to press play now, and I'm going to let this run for at least two minutes and you may lose your marbles a little bit um, but please stick with it because what I want you to listen for is the way that this second audio clip drifts slowly out of time with the top one and how eventually it starts to create these really um, organic and bizarre um, pulses and rhythms okay so I'm going to play it and I am going to leave it run for a good couple of minutes um, enjoy Don't ever look back.
Okay, I'm going to free you from your prison just for a second. Okay. You hear that? And you hear all those kind of amazing rhythms that happen in between. You really do have to free your mind of um, Western traditional musical form. Forget that 4-4 ever exists. Forget that meter ever exists. Um, and allow your mind to, to kind of fill in the gaps and piece the puzzle together. Eventually, what happens is that, and if I kind of move along a bit, eventually the audio goes so far out of sync that it starts to loop, come back on itself and starts to come back into sync. So eventually towards the end... So eventually they, they basically lock back together again. Now, if I zoom right in, and I did this earlier, you'll know that it's not exactly bang on. Um, and that's because of a, um, the amount of detune that I've applied. I don't think I'd ever get these to lock up exactly again. Um, but that's close enough for me. And it kind of does the whole round trip of being in sync, then out of sync, and all these beautiful variations, and then back in sync again. Um, so that's it. I mean... Obviously, this Steve Reich's piece is just the kind of the raw phase technique. There's nothing else to it. Really brave piece. Um, for, for you guys, you might just want to kind of listen to this and try and isolate a few sections where you think, oh, my God, yeah, awesome. There's a, there's a super cool rhythm there. And maybe you could resample that and use that as a maybe, pardon me, a two-bar, four-bar hook or something in a, in a track, a techno track, a hip-hop track, whatever. Um, I hope this has inspired you a little bit. Um, do remember that if you want this to occur more slowly, the 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 dr uh, sync drift, you would apply a, a kind of a shorter or a smaller detune down here. So if I had set it to minus five instead of minus ten, this change would occur over an even longer period of time. So totally up to you how you want to do it. But give it a go. I hope you have some fun with it. Uh, and yeah, try and open your mind a little bit to the rhythms that are um, falling inside and outside of uh, our conventional 4-4 uh, and other Western meters. Um, awesome. This is it for this vid. Peace, peace, peace.